Hey guys, in this video we are going to be looking at the development of the pollen grain as well as the development of the embryo sac. Now, before we get into this, we have to realize that we are talking about sexual reproduction in flowering plants. When we talk about sexual reproduction, we are actually talking about the fusion of a male gamete and a female gamete in order to form an offspring. So this is where the pollen grain and the embryo sac come into play. Because the male gamete can be found in the pollen grain and the female gamete can be found in the embryo sac. This is a general flower structure. Not all flowers have this structure, but this is what is most commonly used. So we're going to stick to this. If you want to know more about the structure of a flower and all the different parts, I've already prepared another video on that. I'll leave the link to it down in the description below. So first, let's look at the development of the pollen grain. Now, where are the pollen grains located? They are located in this part here. This part is known as the anther. So when we cut the anther this way, and we look at the cross section of the anther, this is what it will look like. This is what we have. Inside the anther, each anther has four pollen sacs. Inside each pollen sac, there is hundreds of pollen grains. This is where the pollen grains develop. So the pollen grain begins as a microspore mother cell. So there are three processes in the development of a pollen grain. The first of which is meiosis. So for meiosis, what happens is the microspore mother cell, which is diploid, after meiosis, it will become haploid. So this microspore mother cell will form four microspore cells, from microspore mother cells to microspore cells. These cells are haploid. Anytime a cell undergoes meiosis, it will become haploid. The number of chromosomes will be half. And this is crucial because we want to maintain the chromosomal number of the offspring. So we want it to be diploid as well. So we need two haploid gametes to fuse. N and N fuse to become 2N again. So the 2 and the diploid chromosomal number is maintained in the offspring. So this tetrad will eventually develop and they will split. They will split into four individual pollen grains. So the process of the tetrad becoming pollen grains is just development. So there's growth and development. The tetrad will become pollen grain. In each pollen grain, the nucleus is going to undergo the third process, which is mitosis. So now we have haploid nuclei. The haploid nuclei are, are going to undergo mitosis to form two haploid nuclei in each pollen grain. And these two haploid nuclei have their own function. One is called the generative nucleus and the other one is called the pollen tube nucleus, sometimes simply referred to as the tube nucleus. We will look at the function of these two nuclei in more detail when we are discussing double fertilization. So this is how the pollen grain develops inside the pollen sacs, inside the anther. By the way guys, if you are learning something from this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help to support the channel, it makes a big difference. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now let's go to the embryo sac. So where is the embryo sac located? Let's look at the flower again. The embryo sac can be found in this structure here in the middle of the flower. So this whole thing is known as the ovary. And inside the ovary, you can see smaller spherical structures. These are the ovules. So the embryo sac develops inside the ovule. Now, unlike the pollen sac, the pollen sac has hundreds of pollen grain. Each embryo sac only has one egg cell. And inside each ovule, there is only one embryo sac. This is what an individual ovule will look like. So the ovule starts at the funicle. The funicle is the part that joins to the ovary. But the exact point of attachment is known as the placenta. So the funicle is the stalk that holds up the ovule. And then we have the integuments. So these integuments actually serve to protect the embryo sac. Just outside the embryo sac, we have a mass of parenchyma cells known as the nucellus. And right in the heart of the ovule is the embryo sac. This is where it's located and this is where it will develop. Now, the embryo sac starts out as megaspore mother cells. So we have megaspore mother cells. Megaspore mother cells are also diploid. 
and the processes are very similar to the development of the pollen grain. So the first process here is still meiosis. So meiosis will produce four megaspore cells, and these cells are haploid. So out of the four megaspore cells, three are going to degenerate. Three will degenerate, and only one will survive. And one of the megaspore cell is going to develop into the embryo cell. So again, you can see the parallel. The second process is the same. It is development. Megaspore cell develops into the embryo sac. Now this is not the end because the embryo sac currently only has one nucleus. This nucleus is going to undergo the third process which again is mitosis. But this is a bit special because in the embryo sac, mitosis happens three times. So the first time, two nuclei are produced. The second time, it doubles to four nuclei. And the third time it doubles again, finally, to eight nuclei. Now, these eight nuclei are distributed differently. There are three at the top inside what we call antipodal cells. There's two in the middle forming the polar nuclei. And there are three at the bottom. Two inside synergid cells and one in the actual egg cell, in the ovum, which is the female gamete. If you'd like to access notes on this topic as well as several other topics and some practice questions as well, please head over to my website, mrwelltuition.com. There I have arranged and organized all the content so it's easy for you to find and easy to go through and very useful for revision. So I hope this video has helped guys. If it has, please don't forget to hit the like button. I'll see you in the next video.